is a disease of the genome. If we compare the genome of cancer cell with a standard human reference, we find that it is often altered at multiple sites. Luckily, not all these genetic alterations are dangerous or pathogenic. Many of those are also present in all the other cells of our body since birth. These are called germline mutations, are inherited from our parents and are what make each person unique. But there are other alterations which are acquired in a specific tissue, typically as a result of DNA replication mistakes or exposure to mutagenic factors. These are called somatic mutations. In most cases, these mutations are not dangerous. Still, in some cases, they may result in alteration of the cellular phenotype, like, for example, cell growing in abnormal way, as in the case of benign polyps. A cell that accumulates genomic alterations, often as a consequence of exposure to environmental effects, like excessive tanning, for example, or due to the effect of bad lifestyle habits, like obesity or smoking, increases its probability of developing an aberrant phenotype, which lead to cancer. Differently from benign polyps, cancer cells can invade surrounding tissues or even migrate to other parts of the body. On average, a tumor cell has accumulated between 1,000 and 10,000 somatic mutations on its DNA, but only some of them are the real drivers which lead to development of the cancerous phenotype. Some of the somatic mutations are present just because the genome of tumor cell is not very stable. In some cases, each tumor cell can generate some specific mutations and pass them to their progeny, creating a genetically heterogeneous tumoral mass. In other cases, all the cells of the tumor share roughly the same mutations, as in the case of clonal tumor. Sometimes the acquired mutations give to the tumor the capacity of invading other tissues, entering the blood or lymphatic system and invade tissue far away, which is what we call metastasis. Cancer genomics is the study of the differences in the DNA sequence between tumor cell and normal cells. Through genome sequencing, we can identify these genomic alterations and therefore characterize the tumors to understand their sensitivity to therapies and predict their prognosis. Cancer genomics represent a powerful tool in oncology, but there are some technical parameters we must be aware of to correctly design and perform cancer genomic sequencing. After that a biological specimen has been properly prepared, Next generation sequencing machine can generate fragments of DNA sequence that we call sequencing reads. The number of times a reference base of the genome is represented within a set of sequencing reads is called sequencing coverage. In order to correctly identify which genomic changes occur in the DNA of tumor cells, we need to have a good sequencing coverage to be able to distinguish real genomic changes from sequencing mistakes and in order to identify mutations with low frequency. Therefore, as a general rule, if you want to sequence a bigger fraction of the genome, you will obtain more data and the complexity of the analysis and the cost as well will be higher. Depending on our needs, for measuring genome alterations, we can choose between different sequencing targets we can opt for targeted sequencing, alias gene panels, which allow us to confidently detect alterations on a defined number of specific genes. All exon sequencing, which is used to screen the coding regions, which account for about 1-2% of the genome, or if we want to have a complete picture, we can choose all genome sequencing to access the whole genome, including non-coding, like regulatory regions, pseudogenes, and haplotypes. 
gene panels can get very high coverage on selected disease-specific genes and are therefore widely used in the diagnostic setting for their ability to well spot known hotspot mutations on specific genes at high depth with reduced time, cost and data burden. Comprehensive approaches, such as the old exome and old genome sequencing, have the benefit of identifying multiple, potentially unknown, mutations simultaneously, enabling explorative research and new discoveries. Albeit at an increased cost and amount of data, and longer analysis time and complexity. They are increasingly being used in primary research and early clinical trial for exploring the genomic landscape and molecular mechanisms of various cancer types and for characterizing mutations that drive cancer progressions. Different sequencing targets require different amount and quality of input DNA samples to perform the library preparation step. In general, the best quality of genomic sequencing is obtained from large amounts of cells and from fresh frozen or fresh tissue samples, rather than formally fixed paraffin embedded samples. Typically, gene panels do not require large amount of gDNA. Based on the experience of our facility, about 10-100 nanogram, depending on the kit type, and are usually compatible with low-quality samples, such as DNA extracted from formally fixed paraffin embedded tissues. On the other hand, for whole exome sequencing and whole genome sequencing, a minimum amount of 50 nanogram of gDNA is usually recommended. There are all exome sequencing and all genome sequencing library prep protocols optimized for DNA extracted from formally fixed paraffin embedded samples. Still, this workflow can be challenging, primarily when the DNA is extracted from stored specimen in retrospective series due to the sequencing artifacts introduced by formalin fixation. Another critical point to consider when designing an experiment is the need of control samples. When you perform the analysis of cancer samples, it is crucial to have a matched normal samples in order to determine the real genomics variation associated with tumor cell and exclude inherited germline alteration. Typically, control samples used as a source of normal DNA are blood, BACA swap, or the normal tissue surrounding the tumor. In this last case, we have to be sure that the microenvironment of the tissue is not altered. Let's now talk about some potential issues related to tumor sample analysis, tumor purity and intratumor heterogeneity. In general, solid tumor tissues obtained from clinical practice are highly heterogeneous. They can be a mixture of cancer subclones surrounding normal tissues, stromal and infiltrating immune cells. Estimating the tumor purity, that is the fraction of cancer cells in these heterogeneous samples, is crucial as the contamination of normal cells in tumor tissue can introduce noise in genomic analysis, reducing the signal of tumor alteration which becomes more difficult to detect. Moreover, often within the same tumor mass, there could be more than one population of tumor cells. Even a mutation present only in a tiny fraction of cells could be responsible for drug resistance or relapse if it is conferring a selective advantage to the tumor. Since the actual probability to sequence slowly represented DNA species in bulk DNA is proportional to the sequencing depth, the mean coverage needed to detect the direction present in small subclones needs to be much higher. A powerful approach to overcome these challenges is to study a solid tumor samples at the single cell level to identify and characterize the subpopulation of cells. For a more comprehensive view on single cell technique, you can watch our dedicated single cell co-short movie. sequencing, low quality reads are filtered out and the remaining reads are mapped to the reference genome. At this stage, it is essential to determine how efficient the sequencing has been and this can be done by checking the sequencing coverage.
quality measures often look like this. The first number express the average coverage and suggests that in this case each base has been sequenced an average of 100 times. Being an average of all the sequenced genome, this number does not give any information about regions of lower sequencing efficiency. Therefore, it's useful to provide a measure on how uniform is the coverage of the target genome or how many bases have zero or low coverage. In this case, the quality measure tells us that 90% of the regions have a coverage of at least 20-fold. Once we are assured to have reached the desired coverage, there are several different types of genomic changes that we can detect, which can be divided into small and large alterations. Small alterations, which require high sequencing coverage to be confidently detected, include single nucleotide variation, which are point mutation of a base pair change, as for example if a A is replaced by a C, or Indels that are small insertion and deletions, which are made up from two bases up to a few dozen. Small alterations can be detected by comparing the genome of the collected samples with the matched normal tissue or blood DNA to exclude germline mutations. Genomic variations for each pair of samples are recorded in a text file with VCF extension. After several metadata row showing how the file was produced, each variant is represented by a row in the VCF file reporting several pieces of information, such as the location of the variation on the genome, the alternate allele and the reference genome at that location, quality scores and whether or not the variant has, post, has passed quality filter, and additional information, such as the number of samples which have this variation and the combined depth across the samples. Detecting alterations is pretty straightforward, but due to the high number of mutations carried by cancer cells, the management and interpretation of data can be very challenging, especially when sequencing the whole genome. In this case, a file will contain several tens of thousands of rows. Bioinformatic tools can be used to add to the VCF files functional information for each alteration, such as the, the affected genes and the potential functional impact of the mutation. For example, if it, if it results in a frame shift or in a silent mutation. Moreover, to identify disease-causing mutation and prioritize potential drug targets, clinical curated databases updated by International Tumors Board can be screened. It must be kept in mind, however, that filtering and annotating mutation are crucial but challenging steps of the analysis, which often need to be manually curated to account to the specificity of the tumor. We could also have large alterations. In fact, the genomic instability of tumor cells can also result into the accumulation of structural chromosome aberrances, which can be detected also at lower sequencing coverage. These large alterations include copy number alterations, which happens when a portion of the genome are present in an abnormal number of copies, not two. These are identified as portions of the genome undergoing gain or loss of a stretch of DNA and are detectable as local changes in sequencing depth relative to a normal control. We could also have structural rearrangement, which is when a portion of the genome is located in a different location. Can we perform a similar analysis without the normal samples? Without a match normal samples to filter out germline mutations, the number of variants from the reference genome for each individual can be very high, sometimes like 70 or 100,000 of variants. In these cases, we can filter at least a fraction of them with information from a broad population of health individuals, discarding the most polymorphic sites. However, this approach should be used with care as well-known cancer driver alterations are found in genes which are frequently mutated across the population and would be discarded with this approach. 
Many previously published data about cancer genomics can be used and interrogated thanks to the effort of the cancer genomic program, such as the Cancer Genomic Atlas. TCGA, which includes clinical, genomics, and transcriptomic information of over 10,000 patients spanning 53 cancer types. These datasets are harmonized and curated and are therefore well suited to compare to your data. Let's sum up what we have learned by talking with Anna Sofia from the Center for Omics Sciences at Ospedale San Raffaele. Cancer genomics studies the DNA differences between tumor cells and normal cells, which can be detected by genome sequencing. Depending on our questions, we can opt for different sequencing targets, disease-specific genes, all the coding regions, or all the genome. And we have seen that different sequencing targets require diverse amounts and quality of input DNA, and are characterized by different times, costs, and data burden. Crucial aspects of cancer genomics analysis are need for control samples to distinguish somatic alteration from germline alterations, good coverage to confidently detect a rare alteration, estimate of the purity of the sample to filter out the noise introduced by the presence of non-cancerous cell types. The DNA differences we can detect by bioinformatic analysis are small alterations like SNPs and NINDELs or large alterations like CMVs and structural rearrangements. Keep in mind that the technical alteration is pretty straightforward. Still, interpretation of results can be very challenging and requires a deep knowledge of the different tumor types.